welcome to a little unboxing for you. First, before I begin, let me explain why I have this. Now, one of my hobbies is playing with remote control cars. And let me just show you a picture of one of the most beautiful campsites in the world. The one and only Fraser Island. And here is some footage of the vehicle that this is going to go into driving in one of the most corrosive places in the world, the beach. But there's no point having a toy like this if you're not going to use it in the world's best sand pit playground, the largest sand island in the world. So, let us begin. And again, we have two boxes in a box. So this is the Hobbywing Xeron X motors. It's the 550 3300 KUV. Suitable for a rock crawler, but to be honest, I want to use it more like a basher because it's fun. I like rock crawling, but I also like going fast too. So one of the uh, reasons for this upgrade is that I already upgraded the motor and the speed controller, but unfortunately the speed controller died. And once you have access to a certain level of speed, you can never go backwards. Did not came with one of those. Oh, but I can use that. Okay, so we have one 
big chunky motor. The strange thing with these is they have their own uh, sensor wire, so these ones will go to the speed controller, and this will make the car go fast. And this is the heart of it. So one of the reasons is I got this is because it's waterproof. And my son, who will probably be driving it most of the time, there's something about boys and water. Now, being a man who was once a boy, I wouldn't know anything about that, of course. But this parts and vehicles will be going in approximately one week's time. One of the greatest adventures of my and my son's life that include water and four drives. So while I get the big toy to drive, I gotta make sure he has the little toy to drive. We are about to embark on a trip to what is considered the Holy Grail. I forgive my uh, terms there, but one of the most iconic four wheel drive tracks in the country of Australia. And that's the old telegraph track. Doesn't sound like much, but it is. So, in the days of the war, World War II, um, they created a line of communication in the north of my state of Queensland. They ran a telegraph line so they could communicate with the army. Oh, pretty. And in that line, they created a, a direct line, like straight from the point of communication straight to the top of Queensland which is the, the northernmost point of our country. And just past that, there was water, and there was an island called, when I grew up, Papua New Guinea. Um, and the, the enemy was pushing forward to Australia. And so um, <coughs> they created a line of communication, and by doing that, they created a straight line of telegraph wires. And that line went over a number of creeks and potentially rivers and people in four drives recreated that straight line um, creating a track because there was already a track there and with numerous water crossings it became known as a as a challenging track with lots of river crossings hmm. and over time it became an iconic track for four wheel drives to drive over so in about one week's time, I will be making the pilgrimage to that track. And with my son in tow, Here we go. We have one, 
Speed control. Waterproof, except for that plug, which will never reach where it needs to go. I'll have to figure that out. Anyway, so I plan to document and record some of my travels, and if I can get someone to hold the camera, um, hopefully to get my vehicle crossing the river and not getting stuck in it and drowning because unfortunately where we're going there's a certain creek called Nolan's Brook that likes to claim four-wheel drive vehicles every season so I'm going to leave it there and thank you for joining me and stay tuned for more Loyalty Beach, far north Queensland. This is at a campsite. So when we'd pull up, I'd uh, put some batteries in the uh, remote control and let the little fella um, just go for a drive. Normally it would attract uh, lots of people interested. So you can see people just camping. It's a massive campsite. There was hundreds and hundreds of people there. He uh, wandered off and it took me like half an hour to find him. And that's how big the place was. Alright, so this is in the Atherton Tablelands, um, just near Cairns in North Queensland. And uh, we went to some hot springs. And just down the road from the hot springs was uh, this free camp. And so there was a, a lot of uh, motorhomes and caravans up top, but I found this little dirt road down to the creek and um, set my tent up right next to the creek. And uh, this is uh, the full speed. So you had to control the throttle to maintain the spin. If you gave it too much throttle, it, uh, it would crash. But if you could get that throttle just right, you can hold the spin, which we'll see in a second. Um, I highly recommend this motor and speed controller. It's uh, made such a big difference to the, to the TRX4. Uh, here we go. I think we get the spin going on in a second. After a few test runs, of course. There we go, almost. Yeah. Let's get that spin going. Here it goes. So yeah, it's a pretty cool effect to get out of a remote control car. Once you put the throttle up a little bit, it just it loses it. And so the next morning, we uh, got up early and we're high in the mountains and um, there was like, uh, we were in the clouds. Oh, well, there's the spin. That's one thing. Oh, hang on a second. So that's the campsite. So there's a creek right down there, um, which I would use to dunk the vehicle to clean it. And there was a couple other people camping. But compared to just above, there was uh, there was heaps of motorhomes and caravans up there. So we found a nice quiet spot so that we could go to the hot springs in the morning. And there's the hot springs. Early in the morning, about 7 o'clock in the morning, we're in the clouds. There's the, the air is misty. It's like it's kind of raining, but not raining because we're, we're in a rain cloud. And you've got the steam coming off the hot springs. Um, in one of these hot springs, there's like five hot springs, and like one's the hottest. And as it goes down the creek, it gets cooler. And so it's just coming up through this sand that you can see. And uh, the water is very hot. And I think I was in the middle pond, 
and I basically dug a hole and I sat in there for about an hour and feel amazing afterwards. And it was so hot I was a bit worried about the tyres and the glue melting. So it's uh, surprisingly hot. And I think that's the hottest spring right there. Alright, this is Etty Bay, uh, just south of Cairns. And the reason why I wanted to come here is you'll see in a minute. Um, so this is just basically doing a bit of rock crawling on the beach. Um, you know, there's just so many places you can take a remote control like this. And it always attracts attention wherever it goes. And so I give it a bit of a belt up the beach. Just being cautious of the little kids because uh, uh, these things, it moves fast and you wouldn't want to be hit by it. So you can see the, uh, you'll see the waterproof qualities of the speed controller and motor. And uh, uh, the power was impressive, so it was a fantastic oh, upgrade. So the Sport has a waterproof Celoc servo, the Z1 speed controller and motor. Um, and I pulled out the phones, the original phones, and I got some closed cell phones, um, some good quality ones so that they won't degrade from water. And I put some more holes in the tyre so that the water would drain out of them because the water disintegrated the foam in the original tyres. So yeah, we're not afraid to put it into salt water. I think it's going to need a service soon. And this is why you come to Etty Bay. It's one of the, uh, it's probably the only place in the world where you can pretty much guarantee to see cassowary birds walking around. They are the closest living thing to a, a dinosaur uh, with the feet colors and the heads it's a very unique animal and the little fella just checking it out all right so in the uh trip that we did up north this is one of the highlights where we stayed here a couple of nights it's called elliot falls on a iconic full drive telegraph track and um it's a, a beautiful spot and uh, lots of people like to to stop and have a swim because it gets hot and there's lots of water. You don't have to worry too much about showers because you're in the water in and out every day up here. And uh, just over those rocks it goes down the waterfall, um, which I didn't want it to go down. But yeah, completely waterproof. It's nice. The only thing is the battery I just got to worry about. Just taking it for a bash through the butter. Beautiful spot up here. You'll see me jumping in in a second. This was just going up the footpath, just a nice little thing. And there's some guy jumping into the water there. You can see the uh, the water in the background. It's beautiful. Crystal clear water. Cool. Refreshing. This is the uh, the main attraction where you just jump in and then you float down. So we took a, a floaty down with us so we could just cruise down. And so you can just float down for as long as you want, but you're going to have to walk back. And sometimes walking back can be a little bit tricky. But you can float down for a little while and there's a spot where you can climb back up 
reasonably easy. So we did this pretty much uh, every day multiple times while we were there. Thank you for uh, watching the video and I'll have I got more footage of the the sport which I'll release a little bit later on. Thank you.